Hello, English 1B students. Um, I'm back again for another mini lecture or a lecture. I'm not sure how many of these things are. Um, well, first, I hope you're doing well. I uh, hope you're keeping your patience and keeping your health um, as we all shelter in place. So this was the fourth lecture, I'm going to call it mini, uh, the fourth lecture on Cyrano de Bergerac. And in this case, I'm trying to set up discussions. Okay, this will be the first time I do discussions on, on Canvas. And so <laughs> we'll see how it goes. And so this time I'm going to set something up, tell you a little bit, but then leave some blanks for you to tell me um, what's going on. Okay, now I've talked about the plot lines, right? There's the Cyrano plot line, there's the Roxanne plot line, there's the Christian plot line, and there's the De Guiche plot line, and they all get tied together. I haven't said as much as I want to say about Roxanne, this character that the other characters are in love with or in lust with or have crushes on, however you want to define love uh, as it stands in this play. Again, I've had you look at two different film versions, the 1950, I posted at least one uh, clip from the 1990 version. Um, I'm hoping you'll go further with those items uh, in ways to help you. Um, I expect for us to do this work <clears throat> on Cyrano de Bergerac and then um, I'm going to wait for your responses. I think I'm making this up as we go and we will move um, back into Frankenstein and the research project based on the Norton anthology the Norton um, edition that we're using with Frankenstein to set up the required research paper um, for our class uh, I'm also going to offer some research outside of the Norton um, because we do have access through the library uh, website um, also. But more on that later. Okay, so here we are with Cyrano de Bergerac. I said we have the, the plot lines. Um, we have this character of Roxanne. And at this point, especially since I haven't talked about her that much, you should probably have some ideas of your own about Roxanne. You should probably have a, a, a sense of what you like about her, what you don't like about her. Uh, what images, what, what sense of her. If you were going to direct your film version, not the 1950, not the 1990, but the 2020 film edition, how would you play her? How would you cast her? How would you, uh, what would you want to come forth most importantly from this character of Roxanne? Okay. So, a couple quick points when I think about this. Okay, now in Act One, Roxanne, she's, you have to sort of admit she's the eye candy. She's the object of desire. Um, we look at her. She only has a few lines. She speaks up in support of her cousin Cyrano. Um, and yes, sort of like in Frankenstein, cousins are not. Um, it doesn't seem strange that they would be interested in each other as Cyrano's interested in Roxanne. Nobody says, you know, Labrette doesn't say, my God, she's your cousin. You know, it doesn't say that. Okay, so let's just ignore that. It's stranger to us. Okay, but let's go back to this. Uh, she's this object of desire in Act One. She's there to be looked at. She's there. Um, she has a couple lines in support, as I said, of Cyrano to the Count de Guiche. She comments on his his swordsmanship and all his other fine qualities. So again, we know she thinks of um, Cyrano's fine qualities, but we know from Act 1 and Act 2, she doesn't see him as a romantic option, as a choice. She's not pining for him in the way that Cyrano is pining for her. Okay. Um, okay. So in Act 2, Roxanne is there to set the Christian Cyrano collision in, in, into motion, right? She has that uh, meeting with Cyrano in the bakery. 
at which point Cyrano thinks she's going to tell him how she cares for him. And Cyrano is sadly disappointed. Um, she's describing the man she's attracted to. And she uses various qualities that Cyrano is recognizing in himself. But at some point, she uses the term beautiful. And he hesitates. And then she clarifies who it is. And Cyrano, who's been very forthcoming very warm, very engaging with Roxanne pulls back. And what does this have to do with me, madame? The way in which you or I would probably pull back if we had been disappointed in our expectations in the field of love. Okay, I want to humanize Cyrano in that regard. So, and and you know then we find out that she wants Cyrano to you know protect this man that she loves I've talked about this in the other lectures she also does something that's a little a sort of cruel um, Cyrano as we find out in the course of this act has just defeated a hundred men um, or most of a hundred men and the others ran away um, the night before and Roxanne seems to have some inkling of this, but it's so less important than her connection and her protection, her connection with and her protection of Christian. Okay. And in fact, she says, have him write about your exploits to me. So instead of she got the favor she wanted, Cyrano has, has agreed to protect this, this new uh, recruit in his regiment, in his company, uh, Christian. But she can't even wait. She can't, she doesn't have time for whatever, you know, for the great exploits of Cyrano. And in fact, she'd rather hear about it from Christian. You know, it's, it's a small unintended insult that hurts me when I read it as I'm, you know, identifying with, with Cyrano. Uh, in this case okay so I find that I find that a sad small moment in ways that a sort of small moment that I find cheery is when the orange girl and this is well played in the 1950 version the orange girl is, is quite taken and wants to help Cyrano with food and drink and you know and she looks at him wistfully especially in the 1950 uh, 50 version and, you know, and that's part of the uh, librette's support when he says, no, you're wrong, Cyrano. A woman could love you. Did you not see the eyes of the orange girl, etc.? Okay. Roxanne. That's my main point here. Okay. So in act two, she comes on, asks a favor that sets in motion the, the entangling of the Christian and the Cyrano plot lines. And then she's off stage. And in the rest of Act Two, we continue with well, first we get the De Guiche and Cyrano plot lines. And I talked about that in my last lecture, the whole thing about patronage and independence. And then in the end of Act Two, we have the Christian finally shows up and collides with um, attempts to collide, as I've talked about in my lecture, with Cyrano, in order for Christian to prove his independence and his toughness and his place in the new regiment. Um, but then that we shift into that whole thing of let's, you don't have the wit, I'll help you out. Okay. Act three. Act three is um, what? Uh, wow, we go from the early courtship of Christian, aided by Cyrano to his desire for independence, not wanting Cyrano's help and failing. Okay, I talked about this a bit um, in, in relation to the, the, the exercises with the, um, the clips on the, the balcony, etc. cetera. Um, but by the end of the act, Christian and Roxanne are married. Okay. And De Guiche is quite angry 
about it and is also um okay so there's the Dagish plot line so let me set this up so I, I'm, I want you paying attention to Roxanne but we, she's in a context okay Dagish is plotting to get control of Roxanne 